So, hello everyone and welcome to Battle Brothers, which is a turn-based strategy game uh, where we are playing as mercenary group, where we can be hiring new mercenaries and all that. And um, in a medieval fantasy world. So, that's the setup for the Battle Brothers, where we are going to be starting the new campaign relatively soon. And we can rename different mercenaries uh, who may remain with us with different type of time periods. There's probably going to be a lot of deaths for a certainty. So if you wish to be named into this game, do let me know in the comment section so I can do that renaming after this. So basically I'm starting a new strategy turn-based game specifically because now Halcyon 6 is completed. And uh, I do wish to have one strategy game pretty much going on all the time at the very least. I may start Stellaris also at some point later on, but for now, I felt that the Battle Brothers was interesting. So I thought that we would be going and giving it a look. And play as far as we may be able to get. I don't know how far I will be able to get anyways. So, soon into the new campaign. Um, Anyways, uh, I've watched a little bit of Battle Brothers before, so I know the concepts. And I've played a little bit of the scenarios. Basically, Defend the Hill, I was able to actually win finally. And uh, just a few things, but generally speaking, I'm not that experienced for certainty in this yet. Just a few little things, and I've never played the campaign by myself. So, yeah, let's, let's just go. Uh, late game crisis, I think, can be random. I have no idea what any of those anyways would be. Permanent destruction. Cities, down and castles can be permanently destroyed during the late game crisis. And having the world go down in flames is one of the many ways you can lose your campaign. Recommended. Yes, I think that's probably a good idea. That's then the map seed. Random. I don't know what will be going on and happening. What should be our company name is a different question, though. I wonder, can we change this later on? <sighs> hmm. Let's think. Let's see what kind of uh, pictures we have here anyways. What would I wish to take for us? Hmm. It's a pretty nice looking, looking different options here for banners for sure. Huh. Interesting. Really nice how you can uh, go and uh, customize what kind of a company you would be, and what your name will be, what will be your banner, and all that. Very medievalist indeed, which I like to. We could go with something like Raven, very simplistic, yes, sus. Let's see, let's see. A lot of good options. I like this picture too. Boar. Okay, that's all, but that's quite a few banners nonetheless. Let's see, what would I wish? I think that is a little bit too elfish for here, even though I generally could be picking something like that. I'm not going to be the cream creepers or something like that. Um, this I do kind of like to. That's a little bit strange. I kind of like this. Um, that's okay. I do like this very simplistic raven. But maybe I'll go with this. So what would be the symbol? Hmm. I'm not sure. It could be something just like a... Uh... Yeah. Well, I could... Hmm. I wonder suddenly also like... Uh... Like, I was thinking about Kalevala, as in considering I'm Finnish and all that, that I could be taking some sort of a name from there. Maybe I should, maybe I should. Yeah, sure. Hmm. I'm just thinking a little bit how I would exactly say, or what would be the next Vainamoinen was regardlessly the main hero in Kalevala, basically. And if I have Vainamoisen, it would be basically something of Vainamoisen, like um, for example, boys, Vainamoisen boys, or something like that. But I'm not sure what would be the end in here. 
Huh. Sure. Uh, yeah, I think that should be fine. So basically the name is in Finnish, uh, Vainamoisen Sword Men. So I think that's fine enough. Vainamoisen Sword Men, but just in Finnish. Sure. Economic difficulty. Okay. Contracts will pay more and you'll be able to carry more resources at once. Um, veteran difficulty provides for balanced playing experience that can be quite challenging recommend for veterans of the game of or the genre. And then expert contracts will pay less and deserters will take their equipment with them. Experts in the game who want more of a challenge in managing the company funds and supplies. Then what will be the starting funds? You'll start with fewer crowns and resources to buy things. So crowns is the currency we use in this game and there's uh, indeed other resources like uh, tools and medicine and so on. And you'll start with more crowns and resources. Iron Man I don't think is a logical <laughs> idea nonetheless. So probably we will not be really loading a lot but maybe I will load if we completely die off if we wish to be continuing. Though it may be the case that I will just maybe start a new one then later on, but mm, less challenging opponents. Veteran provides for a balanced playing experience, it can be quite challenging. Uh, let's have a start in medium, start in fan, funds and economic difficulty, at least a veteran. Then this, at least a veteran, but I don't know. More challenging and numerous. <sighs> For experts in the game. Hmm. Like, I'm wondering, would I take this into the expert as such? We could, of course, try it. Probably will mean uh, quite a lot of deaths, but hey, why not? I, we will die a lot. I will start a new game at some point, I'm sure, but let's just go and start with this, I guess. Ranged weapons work best when firing at groups of enemies, they are bound to hit someone, quite understandably. So, the last battle where we all start off from. It all went wrong. Two days ago, the company was hired to track down Hokar the Weasel and his band of raiders. But it was them who found you first. An ambush. Some joke about horses cut short by an arrow to the throat. Arrow shooting in from everywhere and nowhere. Men holler and scream, a great volume before death. As the hail subsides, you draw your weapon with the rest of the men, only to collapse to your knees. An arrow has punctured your side, you shout in pain. A hurried glance sees the man charge without you to make a valiant last chance stand. Met in force, a steel clashes with steel. You meet eyes with the captain. A last nod before his throat is cut. You're left in command now, or what few men remain. Trembling in pain, you lean on your sword, and we need all the will you can muster. Slowly rise again to the end. Okay, first battle. And straight away, one person died. And another person died. Oh, that's just great. So we have three enemies, Brigantok, Hokar the Weasel himself, Brigantok. We are very much not doing very well. We have this guy here and these two, and that's all that we have. I think we need to just be shooting a bolt, but then it's a different question who we should be shooting. I guess just the first guy. Mm, armed with the shield and his distance of five, but he does not seem to be armed with the shield So I guess in that sense I could also shoot just him Sure At least it didn't say that he would have been armed with the shield Diesel, how dare you escape? Hmm, we could do a spear wall, but I don't think that's necessarily the best Of course, I could just go in front of this 
bowmen and do a spear wall there because they are going to be, they are bound to be advancing. So here's the different skills that we can be using just to trust to hit someone. Uh, spear wall, prepare to immediately attack any opponent that attempts to move into melee range. And on a hit, prevent the opponent from closing in. Cannot be used while already engaged in melee. Then knock back, use the shield to knock the target away by one tile. So it, uh, these skills are very much related into our weaponry. We have shield and a spear, so his skills are as follows. And then of course the shield wall, which is helpful. Let's just go here and try to do the spear wall. We'll see if that will be working out. Mm, and of course you only have the two weapon handed ones, so... Okay, I guess I am the one to actually, yeah, I guess I should have attacked just straight away, considering now I'm basically maybe letting them come first into here. But I don't know, I, I guess I will see about that then first, because otherwise I feel that I should have attacked with both of them, which I didn't do in this case. So let's just go into here, I guess, and just prepare then for the moment. That guy is going to be going to our crossbowman, and so is that guy. There's only one good thing about it, which is that at least you can still shoot a bolt. Only 15% chance, so that is the guy that you are going to be shooting. And uh, otherwise, you shall wait. You are going to move here. And then you cannot attack anymore, but at least you can go into here. And probably should do the shield wall to give some more protection to also this guy and just I guess that's about it that we can do in there. Um, can you, do you have another weapon? You do. So I guess you would need to be just equipping this one so that you at least have some sort of a weapon. But yeah, that wasn't the best choice from me, but not that I could do too much more anymore at least at that point, so... Well, try to hit him. But stupid weasel is going and escaping. Let's try to split this man in half. And we did succeed with that, so that is a good thing. I think you could just prepare a shield wall again though, considering it will protect you a bit better. And then you can just hit. And I guess you could just try to equip your crossbow again, even though it takes time, but I don't really fancy going against that guy. I guess you could try to see if we can see the one guy that is escaping, but he probably is just escaping and we cannot really help that. Didn't manage to hit. Well, I guess we're just committed to trying to kill him and we did all manage to at least survive. Though he took more wounds than he would have needed to, but... Well, we did win at the very least. We did get some loot. Our stats is, first of all, we have to be always taking care about their um, having bandages for them to heal better from uh, different wounds. And then we need, of course, food and then we need tools to be keeping our equipment in good condition. And we got a butcher's cleaver and a buckler as a reward from this. So, the aftermath. You're alive. You won. The adrenaline fades, and in its wake, you can't help but sink back to the ground. Gritting your teeth, you snap the arrow's shaft. Your chest heaves, pain, for fret, everything blurs. The company has been devastated, got down to but a few men. And that bastard, Hoggard, did justice to his name, playing like the weasel he is. What now, Captain? A voice says from behind. It's Horik who sits down beside you, bedding his bloodied axe on his legs. You turn to him to reply, but before you can answer, he continues. Vernon's dead, they slit his throat. He was a good man and a damn good leader, but all it took was one mistake. That makes you the one in charge now, don't it? Erebold, the older, joins the two of you, still breathing heavily. Then Hubert. Save the ceremony and anointments for another day. Let's give the men a good burial and return to Krumhorn to collect our pay. The Weasel's men are slain after all. Besides, Captain, we ought to see to that wound before we lose you too. 
wouldn't want to leave Eberron the Older in charge, right? Right, so be it. So, return to Krum Hall to get bait is the objective. Send the camera, lock camera, toggle, camp, show factions, obscure. And here we are on the pause at the moment, and with space we can always continue. Uh, this is how the map looks like. So Kromhorn is the place we need to be going. Interesting looking, and as I understand, this is a procedurally generated map, so it looks different at different times. Doesn't always look the same. Kind of interesting that there's this type of city here. I'm not sure if we can travel here, considering it's there. The collectors living in these hot shares were valuable amber shots along the shore. Hm. But we start with 2,000 crowns, 50 provisions, 20 tools, uh, 38 ammunition, assorted arrows, bolts, and throwing weapons, and then 20 medicinal supplies at the very least. Not too much though. Okay, so how do I actually, like, I don't remember exactly how to do everything, so from here I can look into my roster. And here we can also see all the perks that we are going to be gaining if we get uh, enough experience to these guys. But, yeah. A simple wooden spear with a metal tip, and it is going to be repaired slightly, so some tools are going to be used for that. So, what kind of characters do we have here? We have Hubert who is, of course, has the spear and this shield, and his background is companion. Hubert is known to be a big talker, but he has every right to be. Waste with a horde of goblins, he used his shield and strength to push a hole in their lines, opening it away for Horik and Eberron to kill them all. With quick whirls and wisps of his shield, the mass deflected all manner of mortal danger, Although rather quiet, you found Hubert's place in a shield wall to be rather indispensable. And he is a little bit dissatisfied, but he doesn't have any other traits than the companion. And here we could be renaming him and giving him a title if we show wish to do so wish to do. Then there is Horik, who seems to have a quite of a lot more perks than just the dissatisfied and the background companion. Brooding and at times suicidal. It's no surprise that Horik is frequently found diving into battle with nothing more than a large two-hander. Supposedly, he once won a chosen tournament, but had to flee after betting a watching nobleman's five. He'll use any weapon you give him, but Horik has a proclivity towards those that can make calamitous ruin out of a man's body. Mm -hmm. Ah, short-sighted, is that a tree or an orc over there? This character is short-sighted and can not see far. And he is also irrational. Well, that's just lovely. The glass is half empty now, but was half full just a moment ago. Has plus 10 or minus 10 resolve randomly at every morale check, okay? That's interesting. So, and anyways, you are uh, pretty good in melee. As I understand, they get more points in level ups if we spend points into hit points if they have stars in the tier so he should be able to have quite a nice amount of hit points there's head armor body armor hit points action points fatigue which plays a role very big role in combat for sure then morale uh, resolve uh, represents the willpower and bravery of characters the higher the less Likely the character fall to lower morale states at negative events and the more likely that characters gain confidence from positive events. Resolve also acts as defense against certain mental attacks that inflict panic, fear or mind control. See also morale. Then initiative you have pretty high, 82. Melee skill is pretty good, 61. To be honest your range skill isn't that bad either. A little bit of melee defense, range defense, damage, uh, effectiveness against armor. Hmm. Okay, interesting. And then chance to hit head. Nice. And the vision. The vision or few reigns determines how far a character can see to uncover the book of war. Discover dreads and hit with ranged attacks. Heavier helmets that at night time can reduce vision. And you have very good melee skill specifically, and I can also increase your melee defense a little bit better, but you indeed do have that one lower vision. What about Eberol the Older then? 
who did get slightly wounded, but light wounds one day, so not bad at all. Gladly. Gladly. You have 51 in the range skill and 2 stars on it, so you definitely will be the one to stay on this duty, so to speak. You have a 56 skill of melee. Melee defense, range defense is a little bit, damage, effectiveness and all of that. Uh, and the initiative is very nice, which is good. You're quicker to act, which is definitely not bad. So, background companion. Eberold is one of the more talented marksmen you've encountered in your travels. A clever bowman, he once loosed two arrows simul simultaneously to kill a charging set of brigands. While he has a fondness for killing from afar, Eberold's no slows is close quarter combat. No slosh in close co quarters combat. No, he wasn't. He used his dagger well. Then he is apparently tiny. Being very short of height, this character is used to slipping through. Plus 5 melee defense and plus 5 range defense, but less melee damage, so that is also the reason why he ain't going to be in the melee battles nearly as much. Then he's also a survivor. Survivor. Why won't you just stay dead? This character is a survivor and will outlive most of his peers. Has a 90% chance to survive if struck down and not killed by a fatality. Well, he more likely will be surviving with us, which is good. But yes, we are just generally speaking pretty dissatisfied. Not uncommon for someone living in the hardships of mercenary life, this character isn't quite satisfied and is hoping for things to improve, because we just lost the battle, lost most of the company in the battle, I mean. We did win a battle, but lost most of the company, so that's just lovely. But yeah, none of them has any full experience yet, this was the experience bar, yes. So yeah, if you wish to be named any of these fellows, Eberon the Older, Hubert, Horik, to be honest, if I'm going to be renaming this guy, he is having to be still the older. He, we can name, rename the Eperont, but he is going to remain the older as a title. Definitely. It's just a fact. So, and these are, like here we can have reserves, but then in here we are going to have the company, those who are going to be going into the battle. And uh, main information is 3 out of uh, 12. So, 12 will be overall able to go into battle at once. But uh, seems to be a good at least little buckler and butcher's cleaver seems to be okay, so... Good enough, I guess, that we got at least those sort of things. But here is our mission to get into this town, so let's see, how did I do this? Ah, uh, return to Grunt get paid, yes. No, not cancelling the contract. <laughs> I was thinking, like, uh, am I cancelling it or not? Okay, how do I actually do this? I'll check the controls quickly and come back in a moment. Well, I'll save first and foremost, save the campaign into a new save game. I think that's a good idea. And just like that. Okay, I think we are just automatically traveling because we had this uh, as a mission, so I'm not actually deciding where they're going. Oh, no, I am, but I was just, I had clicked there, but I didn't see the movement like a line. That would be actually, would have been a nice thing that I would see that they're actually starting to move here. Because I wasn't sure that they were, but okay. We were moving and we're gonna be moving wherever I'm going to be clicking. So, the return to Groom Horn. What a sorry display it must be for the onlookers as you arrive in Krumhorn. Four bloodied and beaten mercenaries down on their luck. The man who hired the company days ago, Sorrel, the counselor, no doubt expected you to return in a more glorious fashion. Still, he welcomes you to his house and offers bread and wine while a servant which is a healer. Few words are exchanged except for the occasional grunt and wheeze, as an elderly man with a shaky hand tends your wounds. A pin pierces your skin, the first of many stitches to come. You grit your teeth till you think you hear one break. Sorrel the counselor sits beside you and asks if you took care of Hogard. You shake your head. 
We killed his men, but the weasel eluded our plates in the end. The healer waves around a glowing firebug, suggesting he wants to push it into your wound. You nod, and he does so. For a moment, that's all there is. You're not a man, but a pins of fire, flesh from flame, a golem of pain. So all the council hands you a goblet of wine. You did well, Selsward. The brigands have been removed. Though it is a shame that Hogarth still lives. We expect to get paid for this, though. Sorrel the Council casps. Well, naturally. 400 crowns is a great amount. He gestures the water servant who rushes to your side with a pay in hand. I wonder, may I make use of your services one more time? I'd very much like to end the headache that is Hogarth once and for all, and I would pay you again, of course, another 400 crowns, shall we say. Horrid scoffs and turns to drink more wine, but Hubert starts to speak. Yes, the company is in ruin, but we will rebuild it. Without the Bainamos and Miekam yet, Horik would drink the crowns away and end up picking on the streets, and Eberl the older. By the cause, we all know we'd go chasing the, chasing the woman folk until one stove his rotted head in. We need the dynamos and Miekami head. It's all we have. What say you, Captain? Horik burps and raises his cup to you. Eperl, the older, playfully thumbs his nose and nods. Kill that bastard Hogarth or not, it's up to you, Captain. I think we need to be killing him. Yes, we have unfinished business with Hogarth. Sorrow the counselor claps his hands in satisfaction. Excellent, excellent, my little birds will need some time to find where Hogarth is hiding his hide now. In the meantime, I suggest you see about stocking up on supplies so that you'll be good and ready to end this when the time comes. I shall see you in a few days time at the le latest. As you leave Sorrel, the councillor's house, and stand on the outskirts of Krumhorn, Hubert seeks a word with you. We need, we need more men, Captain. I know I gave a big speech back there, but Bravada won't do shite. We need more warm parties in the ranks. Figure we find their good men, but them some decent weapons and dress them in the best armor we can afford. The man pauses to glance around. I bet this Bodunk town got a desperate peasant or two looking for a new life, or we could travel to Thief instead in the east. Them city folk aren't always as hardy as these country pumpkins, but we're most likely to find men with fighting experience stopping to rest there. That's what we shall do. Nice, and so we visit Krumhorn, where we need to be then doing things. So here we can easily see all that we need or have. Uh, so, total amount of provisions you carry, the average man requires two provisions per day. So you use seven provisions per day at the moment. Your 48 provisions will last you for six more days at most. Individual provisions will eventually turn bad, so I guess we can't buy too much of that. But we have a possibility to hire, there's a harbor, not sure what we do there. Uh, foreign trader ships and local fishermen, you'll likely be able to book passage by sea to the other parts of the continent here. Ah, oh, maybe to the island, for example, if we would wish so. And then a marketplace where we can be buying some different wares. I guess I can have a peek into here first of all, and we could be selling stuff, but not like we're going to. I wonder how these work. A net used a troll over a target in order to hamper their ability to move and defend themselves effectively. I do think that I would want to be trying out these sort of different things too. Some tried fish. Amber swords. Necklaces and rings. Traders will pay good coin for this. But is there any good reason that we would buy it unless we could maybe get better prices somewhere else? That's of course a possibility. Not sure though, not sure. Hmm. So it is worth 260 gold, but we could buy it for 263, apparently. Interesting. Then arrows, short bow, different type of weapons, knives, wooden shield. I think we would like to have at least another shield. Hmm. But yeah, I guess I should look into hiring new men first and foremost.